Welcome everybody to the Age Changer Show brought to you by Selma Life Ministries. My name is Dave Furrow. This is my dad, Lynn Furrow. Uh, the mission at Summit Life here is to elevate, equip, and empower. We want to elevate the church's vision to see God's eternal purpose, equip believers to live with an eternal perspective, but then also empower believers to live supernatural lifestyle in faith-filled obedience. Today is something we're very excited for. It is our inaugural show. It is. Something that we've believed for for a very long time, but hadn't seen the fulfillment of it. But something that we've believed in faith that, you know, you have a word for not only just the local church in our nation, but something for the nations as well. And so um, something, again, like I said, we're very excited for today. David, thank you. It's been quite a journey, yes, hasn't it? Has. it? And today is a moment where we're seeing our faith come to sight. And But this is just the beginning of the journey. We feel like we have been very committed to the local church and, and faithfully uh, walking our ministry inside the context of a local church. But just feeling a calling uh, to speak and bring what God has put in our heart maybe to a larger context, uh, to other parts of the body of Christ. And so here we go. It's exciting. <laughs> yes, it and is. this program is called Age Changers. And the reason why we're going to uh, call this inaugural uh, uh, broadcast or program Age Changers is because this is going to reflect the series that we're launching out with. It's going to be called Age Changers. This has been a word that's been in my heart for a number of years. And I believe that it's going to set the pace, it'll set the spiritual foundation for really the heart and soul of what we want um, the Age Changers podcast to be. And I, I just want to talk to you just a little bit about the purpose of this podcast. Uh, we want to help equip believers. I want to echo what David said. We want to equip believers but specifically through the podcast, we want to equip believers to discern our times. This is a very critical hour, not only in our nation. I hear a lot of spiritual leaders um, because we live in the United States and we just say this is a critical time for our country. No, this is a critical hour throughout the entire world. And we, we have to have, again, a 30,000 foot view uh, of seeing God's eternal purpose being worked out throughout the entire earth. And we want to be a people, we want to be a church that has eyes to see and a, and a heart that discerns and understands that we are able to see what God is doing, we're able to go and partner with Him and His purpose. And But we, we, we have to transition from taking the truth of God and man-centering it, me-centering it, self-centering it, and we really have to uh, mature in our perspective to cooperate with God. We've got to go uh, and break out of cycles of perpetual immaturity and spiritual infancy um, because we're not going to we're not going to want to see what God is trying to show the church. We're not going to want to receive what God is trying to say to the church until we mature in our perspective. So, really, the purpose of this podcast is to equip believers, help believers, uh, discern our times, but also really try to help establish a foundational framework uh, of authentic spiritual maturity that can match the times that God has called us into. Uh, you know, over and over again, I've preached and I've heard other uh, leaders uh, exhort the body of Christ out of the book of Esther, where Mordecai says to Esther, you know, you have a choice. Uh, you can uh, turn away from this moment of destiny. And, and if you do, God will raise up somebody else to fulfill his purpose. But maybe, just maybe, God has brought you to the kingdom for such a time as this. And so this is a moment where God is, is inviting. He is extending an invitation uh, to a remnant of people in the body of Christ, not only in our nation, but the nations of the world, to answer his call to be age changers. And so, David, just with that introduction, I, I want to say this as we get into this series called Age Changers, that uh, I find that myself as a, a pastor and a leader for many years, 
but also other leaders, uh, we have attempted to teach the church how to navigate change. And so that type of equipping and that type of messaging is, is simply a thing of attempting to equip the church how to manage what is happening to them. Yep. And, and that's good. Uh, and, and we've said things like this, that change is always uncomfortable. It's painful. That sometimes we only change when we hurt enough that we have to. And unfortunately, the church has been so resistant to change. And many times we've been so fossilized in our paradigms and our patterns and our models and our programming, our ways, that change is happening all around us. And the church has been the one who's been most resistant uh, resistant to the winds of change that are happening all around us. Yeah. And so we've also taught people that change is inevitable. So we've tried to tell them this is how you're going to manage change. This is how you're going to become equipped to handle change processes. Uh, but finally, we just had to tell them, hey, even though you're uncomfortable, it's inevitable. Get over the uncomfortable, uh, uncomfortability about being uncomfortable about change. But it was almost like we were threatening them. You must change. But really, it's not about equipping the church how to, you know, uh, manage change or how to properly react to change. Really, God is wanting the church to be a change agent. Yeah. God is wanting us to enact change, to affect change. He's wanting us to be the greatest change agent in our world and in our society. We are called, as authorized agents of the kingdom of God, we are called to be spiritual revolutionaries. Yeah. We are to be countercultural. We are to be pace setters. We're to be forerunners. And, and a part of unpacking this series that we call Age Changers is I want to challenge the church to be those forerunners, to be those pace setters, and to, to just not react to change or help, help better navigate change that is happening in our world, but you be the change that is needed, that the world needs. And, and so that is not a change that originates here. No, as we taste of the powers of the age to come, God wants us to embody that which is coming. There is coming a kingdom, uh, which it's, it's an unstoppable kingdom. It's an unstoppable force. Jesus is going to govern and rule and reign over the earth. And he is already king, but his influence and the reality of his kingdom is going to be felt in every nation of the earth. There's not going to be one part of our planet that is going to remain in darkness. And it's like when I say things like that many times to the church, uh, people, it's like I'm using some type of ethereal language. No, the reality that one day in, in, in a very short period of time, because we're living in a period of great acceleration. We're living in a, in a day where God is going to force his people to change. And then as he breaks our resistance to change, we're going to learn to flow with him, partner with him, and to really be the change agents that God wants us to be. But there is a day that's coming where Jesus, his presence, his lordship, his reign is going to be felt in the farthest uh, recesses of our planet. And it's going to be a glorious day. And all of creation is waiting for that uh, br breaking in of that reality. But you know what? We are called to taste of the powers of the age to come. We are to introduce what is coming uh, in the earth now. And that's why Jesus taught us to pray. It wasn't beautiful, poetic prayer language. Jesus was teaching in, in what we call the Lord's Prayer. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. It, it was a, a kingdom commission and mandate that he was giving his church. And that as we pray that, that is not just something we do out of rote or repetition. repetition. That is something that we're praying that that reality come into manifestation and demonstration. 
Now, today what I want to do is I want to have us go over, before we get to a main text that in the next podcast that we're going to be talking about, I want us to go over to Jeremiah chapter 48. Jeremiah chapter 48. And if, if you're listening to this, I just ask you to open up your device or uh, if you're listening to this at home or someplace where you can grab your scriptures, I want you to just follow along with me in this passage of scripture. But here is a prophetic passage that Jeremiah was prophesying to a, a very specific nation, and it was the nation of Moab. And those of you that are students of the book of Jeremiah, in the last chapters of Jeremiah, Jeremiah is prophesying uh, not only to Israel and to Judah, but the surrounding nations that surrounded Israel. And he was giving them the word of the Lord. And one of the things that he said about the nation of Moab, and if you know anything about biblical geography, Moab was a mountainous uh, kingdom that was kind of uh, off the beaten path. But God uh, spoke to this nation, and this is what he said to them. And he, and he uses the prophetic picture and analogy that they were... Um, he compared them to being like jars of wine that had been undisturbed. And he says this in verse 11. He said, Moab, you have been at ease from your youth. In other words, from the very inception of them as a nation, uh, they had been at ease. There had been no national challenges that had caused growth processes. There was nothing external that had provoked change. And he said, you are like uh, jars of wine that have settled on dregs. And I don't want to do a, a biblical winemaking class, but really the process was that they would pour the juice from the grapes and they would put them into jars and they would shelf them and allow them to settle. And then, of course, impurities, dregs would settle at the bottom. And then they would pour forth these vessels from one vessel to another purifying the wine, purifying the juice before it went through the fermentation process. Because if you don't remove the impurities, it will defile the vintage and the wine will be no good. And so Jeremiah gives this prophetic portrait of what Moab looked like. He said, you've not been challenged. You've not been disturbed in any way. Then he said this, he said, you've not been emptied from vessel to vessel nor have you gone into exile. Nothing has disturbed you, moved you from one place to another, challenged you. And then this is the comment that he makes. He said, your taste remains in you. And he says, your scent is not changed. And I'm going to use our own vernacular. You know, he said, you smell the same way <laughs> that you did years ago. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you, if you have an aroma and a smell... And, and, you know, in our family, we just sometimes say, man, you stink. Um, that's what Moab, Moab was a nation that was spiritually stinky, uh, that it had not a pleasing aroma and a fragrance, but because they had not uh, allowed God to deal with them, to change them, to break them out of their molds and patterns of living and life, they really lacked a maturity to be able to allow God to take them where he wanted them. And he said, if, if, if a decade ago, somebody sampled uh, the flavor of, of your nation and now tasted you in the flavor of your national life now, it would be exactly the same. You know, this is a message for the church. You know, we could, we could take out Jeremiah's word for Moab and just say Jeremiah's word for the church of the 21st century, specifically the Western church. Many times we can go into churches right now, and they are like time capsules. It's like visiting uh, eras and, and, and moments of decades ago, and their music is the same, their presentation is the same, the spirit is the same. Many of them are trying to recapture moments of bygone eras of the church, and they have not progressed. They've not grown. And I, I'm not talking about a progression in style either, David. Yeah. I, I'm not really talking about a, a, a progression of style or, or the type of music. I'm talking about a spiritual perspective and a maturity 
where we're growing and maturing into a fullness of the stature that is like Christ. And so really the measurement is not about the music, it's not about the, the building and, and the environment and the ethos that we're trying to create. I mean, not even talking about the culture, leadership culture, and all those things are important. Yeah. But primarily, the measurement is, are we growing up into Christ? Because it's not about whether we can compare ourselves among each other and say, well, I want to be like that church. And we see that there are certain models out there. And pastors look at models and they go, I want to model my church after that model. The pattern is Christ himself. And the church is never the pattern for the church. Christ is the pattern for the church. So as long as the church tries to compare itself amongst itself, we are end up going to have a spiritual dwarfism. We're going to end up staying in perpetual places of immaturity. We're going to be locked in these epics of times and seasons in which we reenact time. But the church was birthed and born for eternity, not for time. Yes. And really, the only one that can break us out of our bondage to time and to temporal and to transient things is to have a revelation of Christ and as we see him and behold him in his glory, there is a catching up of the church into authentic spiritual maturity that is like unto him. And that's where God is taking the church. But we are going to have to get comfortable and not just comfortable because God is not just wanting to make sure we feel all right about the change of processes yeah. that he is going to enact on behalf of his people. It's about us getting on board God's eternal purpose. Now I want to finish this podcast today by finishing what this text talks about in Jeremiah. It said, therefore, behold, the days are coming. Because they had not changed, their taste and their scent had remained the same. He said, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will send to him, send to Moab, send to those that are fossilized, in this place of, of you know, a refusal to, to, to grow, and a, fuse, uh, a refusal to, to change, to be transformed. God says, this is what I'm going to declare to you. I will send to Moab, to him, pours. One translation says tilters. It, it specifically identifies the purpose of the pourers. The pourers are, are people that would tilt and pour the jars over. Listen, if we're unwilling to be poured forth by God, if we're not going to cooperate with the Holy Spirit and allow Him to pour the content of what's inside of us out and allow Him to purify us as the church, God is going to send the tilters. And can I just tell everybody right now, prepare yourself, the tilters are coming. God is going to send the spiritual tilters to the church in the West and your models and your jars and your methods and your programs are going to get knocked over. And this is what he said. I will send to you the tilters, the pourers, and they will pour you forth and they will empty your vessels. And then not only is there this pouring out and the emptying of ourselves, but then God says, I'm going to break your jars in pieces. And this is one I want to say, no, Lord, you don't know, you know how vested I am in the jar. See, God is more concerned about the contents of what's inside. Because yeah. the kingdom is an eternal kingdom. Uh, the life of Jesus is, is something that it's life from lived from the inside out. And most of the church right now is trying to live life from the outside in. As long as we think that our form looks godly, but if it's devoid of power, if it's devoid of true spiritual authenticity, God said, I could care less about the jar. What I'm interested in is what's on the inside. I'm going to go for what, what is the true content that's inside of you. And if it's not purified and you're not bringing forth Christ, because God wants to bring and reveal himself through the church to the nations. But if we're unwilling to go through the process of transformation, God says, I'm going to, I'm going to leave you without a form. I'm going to leave you without a jar. I'm going to break the vessel where you cannot regress and go back to what you've known. Yeah. 
So you have to, it's not that the content doesn't need a jar, but what we do is we refuse to go to the new wineskin or to, or, or, or to the new jar that God has for the church. And so in this time, we must yield to the change processes that are going on in the church if we're going to become age changers. Thank you guys for joining us. I'm going to turn this back over to David. And David's going to give you some content of if, you, if you've enjoyed this pos- podcast uh, or if you want to know more about Summit Life Ministry, he's going to tell you about that. Thank you guys. Yeah, everybody. If you've enjoyed what you've heard today, you can get more information at summitlifeministries.com. You can also see all our social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, um, even Snapchat. So uh, feel free to get the content there as well. And uh, again, thank you, Dad. Again, this is a very exciting time for us today. It was the first one. Man, I feel pretty passionate. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you preached already. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. uh, So again, thank you, and uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, We'll see you again tomorrow.